so first I measured my door and I kind of added about two inches to the length and width just in case I messed up with the cutting. I just wanted some room, you know, just in case. And then I cut the sheet to the measurements and used fabric scissors to cut the sheet. Then you're going to need a rectangle sponge. I got as close to a rectangle as I can find in a store. For paint, I used matte fabric paint in red, orange, and brown, and I mixed those colors until I got the brick red I liked. Make sure you lay something protective on the floor before you begin sponging because the paint will seep through the sheet. Instead of dipping my sponge into the paint, I just got a foam brush and spread a nice even layer of paint onto the sponge. So I thought showing you the finished door would kind of help me explain what I did. Um, first you're going to take your sponge and starting at the top left of your sheet, you're going to make your first sponge and then you're going to leave about a half an inch between each brick and go down the row making your little rectangular sponges. And then to start your second row of bricks, you're going to take your sponge and kind of go down a half an inch and make it in between the first two sponges you made. All your bricks should be about a half an inch apart. And then I did a little half sponge there. And then I continued the row leaving a half an inch between each brick and making sure they kind of line up in the middle of the two bricks above it. The first two rows are basically what you're gonna continue doing all the way down your door cover. And then you're going to again start the first row again basically. It should line up with the first row too. And again, just you know, what I showed you in the, the first row, it's basically the same thing as the third row, making sure it lines up in the middle of the two bricks above it. So if you're doing it right, every other line of bricks should match up. You see how the first, it, it all should just like match up. I don't know if I'm explaining this right. I'm like terrible at explaining myself, but I'll leave some blog posts down below if you don't get what I'm trying to say or explain. So maybe the blog posts that I've read would help you as well, but this is how I did it. This is me doing some of the sponging. I didn't get that much of it because I don't know, it was just time consuming and I really just wanted to get it done. Um, just with some tips when you're applying the paint to your sponge and you're about to sponge it down. When you sponge it down, make sure you're firmly pressing it into the sheet. And if you don't like the opaqueness of the brick, you can always go back in and re-sponge it. Or you can take your, I use the foam brush. I just took my foam brush, brush sometimes and kind of stippled it to make it to how I want it. I didn't leave it completely opaque because I thought leaving it, you know, with that sponge look gives it more of a brick vibe. When you're done sponging and you're happy with the way it looks, you're going to let the paint dry overnight or depending on which paint you used, I just let mine dry overnight just to make sure it's completely dry. Then I printed out this platform nine and three quarters sign. There's so many you can print out online and I'll leave the one that I use down below in the description box. And to tack the door cover onto my wall, I use this stuff and it's amazing. It really keeps things up on your wall or your door. I'll leave a link to it as well if you're interested in purchasing it because I definitely recommend this stuff if you're gonna tack anything to your wall or door or whatever, because it really does work. And I also use it to attach the sign. And remember how I said I left like at least two inches to my sheet to give me some room and just in case I mess up? I decided not to cut it to fit my door. I kind of just like tucked it in and tacked it on the inside of my closet. It looks kind of ratchet from the inside of the closet, but on the outside it looks really cool. And for my doorknob, I used my X-Acto knife to cut like a slit and push my door knob through there. And that's what I did for the doorknob. And again, I just tacked it all around the edges of my door to make sure it was firmly on there. 
and it work that stuff works really well to keep stuff on your door and whatnot and that's pretty much it i think hopefully i got to say everything i wanted to say in the video if i left anything out i'll leave it down below in the description box along with other information and alternatives to certain things i use in the video i know this project is a little time consuming but it's totally worth the time because i'm totally in love with the way it turns out um it's really easy and repetitive so that's that's a plus um yeah i hope you guys like this video and thanks for watching